Library Out Loud updates you all about the fun and interesting things going on in the Spokane County Library District. Sponsored by STCU and the Spokane County Library District. Hello and welcome to Library Out Loud. I'm Jane Baker with the Spokane County Library District and we're talking library programs and exciting things and I have a guest with me today, Erin Haight. Erin is an employee also at the County Library District and Erin, we're just talking about your title. Tell me again what it is. It is a technology program specialist. It's a recently created title uh, that uh, I and my colleague at the Valley Library, uh, Sarah Rooney, recently received just because we we essentially curate two specialized spaces in, in each of our libraries. Mm -hmm. So um, I work in the lab at the North Spokane Library, mm -hmm. and Sarah works at uh, the studio in the, the Valley Library. The studio in the Valley. And, uh, you know, they're specialized, uh, specialized areas. The Valley very much so. It's much, uh, much of an, an audio-visual audio uh, space. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of uh, photography, videography, she does. Um, editing. Um, and the lab is more of a... Uh, a free form will make it it's very modular mm -hmm. um, we do everything from uh, cooking classes in there mm -hmm. to um, our gardening instant pot classes. Pro classes were in there yeah very, very popular, popular. Yeah. to to gardening, to, gardening uh -huh. to um, uh, some kids programs so we do a lot of kids science programs mm -hmm. um, and uh, Something we'll probably talk about a lot more here shortly. Uh, the resident artist program. Yeah, where yeah. People come in and, and show us uh, show us their skills in the in the world of arts. It, well, the lab it's a very cool space. It's um, flexible in a way. I mean, you know, you walk into the library, and the North Spokane Library is such a pretty library. You walk in, and you know, there's your library stuff, and then the big glass walls yeah. and behind the glass walls is the lab and there's some audio uh, not not the audio visual to the extent of the studio but there is some audio visual sure. and some unique programs that happen there and one of those unique programs that you referenced is the resident artist program and it's similar to something that we had done a couple of years ago and we're bringing it back because it's very popular it is yeah yeah we we first did it in well the lab opened in 2017 after a, a major renovation at the mm -hmm. North Spokane Library and um, that fall uh, we did our first uh, we called it uh, artists in residence at the yeah. time <laughs> um, I should also point out that this was mostly the brainchild of, of Amber Williams yes. who is a librarian there and mm -hmm. was my boss for a long time mm -hmm. um, but uh, so we had did it in the fall of 2017, and at that time we focused mostly on um, the classic fine arts. It mm -hmm. was we most of the people that came in there were painters. Um, we did have painters. a sculptor and a, and a costume designer and some manuscript art yeah, illustration. That was actually the next year. Oh, okay. So in 2018 gotcha. we expanded the concept to mm -hmm. something we called creators in residence to mm -hmm. kind of to get beyond just just painting, which is great. But there are a lot more things going on out there. Um, and then, so in 2018, we had um, a cake decorator, mm -hmm. we had a bookbinder, um, we had a jewelry maker, we had a calligrapher, um, and oh, I'm sure there's one I'm missing. But but anyway, that's it gives you an idea. We uh, just did a lot more stuff. Oh, a graphic a graphic novelist. That's right. There. That's right. We did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, we kind of went on hiatus. We didn't do it last year. We had mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff going on. Um, and then this year we decided to revive it again. Mm -hmm. um, we're calling it resident artists, but it's not limited to, you know, the classic fine arts again. Anybody that uh, has a, an artistic skill would like to demonstrate it. Um, you don't necessarily need to be, a, a, you know, a professional out there. Uh, uh, all levels of seriousness, I guess, are, are acceptable. Right, um, yeah. You know, we're looking for people who want to share what they do uh -huh. with the community. An artisan of, of several uh, 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 types. Yeah. Any types. Yeah. 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 So let, let's talk about what it means, what, what exactly a resident artist is, because uh, uh, applications are open right now. They are. So we're looking for artisans who want to come share their 
creations right. and their talents. And um, so then what happens? What does a resident artist do? Okay. So um, for each of the months from October to January, mm -hmm. um, each month there will be a, a resident artist. There they will be, the biggest part of what they do will be to be in the lab space creating a work or works. Mm -hmm. um, that gives our the people who come into the library, the community members come in there, see what they're doing, can ask questions about it. Um, up on the north end of town, you know, a lot of the art that is that happens in this town happens downtown. And not sure. everybody goes sure. downtown. This is true. Um, and so one of one of Amber's goals in particular was uh, to move it out of the city center and let people out on the, the more periphery of the community get to see how, how these things are done and mm -hmm. talk to people who create art. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in a given month, um, each artist will be, will be in the lab at, for a minimum of 16 hours um, creating and be just, available. Just doing their thing. For, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's an easel or it's a, a you know, sketch pad or um, a little, uh, the, the jewelry maker was actually had a small, uh, I think she had a Bunsen burner there she was heating stuff on. Mm -hmm. And um, so the goal is to invite people to come and ask questions and, and understand what they're doing and maybe get inspired to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, kids in particular love to come in there and ask, they're so good at just sure. uh, asking questions. They're naturals at yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, but they're why? Not shy. <laughs> yeah. um, they also um, conduct a couple of pro library programs, mm -hmm. um, which can be anything from uh, teaching, you know, showing people how to do a certain thing, or just lecture classes. We've had a couple of people who've done some basic art history lectures. Gotcha. And, and uh, those are always quite popular, well received. Uh -huh. um, so you can come in and just watch. Yeah. If if yeah. nothing else, just watch. Um, you don't even have to go into the lab. You can watch from a distance because mm -hmm. of the the glass walls, or you can go in and watch, and then ask questions. Mm -hmm. And the the uh, artist uh, or artisan or creator mm -hmm. um, can just sit and chat with you. Right. What a great opportunity to, to learn about something. And then they do a class or a workshop and we switch out every month from October through January. So we'll have four. Right. Right. And uh, the application process is open right now. Yes. So all somebody has to do is go to our website, which is scld.org. Mm -hmm. And um, you can read about it and fill out the application, and and then and then we have a committee, correct? Right. Okay. Right. So the applications close on May eighth, so there's plenty of time. But yes. But don't wait. Yes. Um, then we do have a, we have a committee. We review the applications. Um, we set up interviews with with the people. Just mm -hmm. let them talk about um, talk about their art, what they'd like to do in the library. Um, what kind of programs they'd like to host, mm -hmm. and then we have the, the very difficult decision of, of picking the four people. Narrowing it down to just yes, four. Because there are so many, sure. so many good applicants. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm always amazed at, I'm not a, a creativity, at least that kind of creativity is not uh -huh. my, my, one of my skills, so I'm always amazed at, at people that do that and can do such a great job of mm -hmm. it. So. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fabulous program, yeah, and, um, and I've been fortunate to have uh, you know some of our creators and residents and past ones, in the years come on this program, and I've gotten to talk to them and find out about things that I had no idea took place in Spokane, yeah. um, or that these people would just sit and chat with us about what they're doing and how they got started and you know their their whole process not only the creating but you know their story of what brought them to mm -hmm. where they are fascinating yeah fascinating I mean, they all have they all have a passion for it and so there's that 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 motivation that drive and they also love to talk about it because this, it's so yeah. important to them and, sure and that's one of the nice things is they are happy to share because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they're excited to to know that somebody else is is excited about the, yeah. what they're doing as they are yeah and and again it doesn't have to be fine art painting right. um, well, we do have some fabulous painters mm -hmm. uh, in the area and I, I believe we've had Karen Mobley in there and some other yes. people that just do fabulous work and and they bring such passion and incredibility to yes. artistry in Spokane yeah. um, but this could be anything sure yeah yeah it's a, a um, Hannah Charlton is a calligrapher and mm -hmm. she um, was, I believe, our very last one in the 2018 session. Mm -hmm. And she's um, conducted uh, a couple, uh, probably two or three courses afterwards. And that's something that it's, 
not an art that necessarily people think about when they first think of the arts. Right. But it's it's also very accessible. Mm -hmm. People understand calligraphy in a, in a way that maybe some of the other arts are, mm -hmm. are harder to, to get right off the bat. Yeah. And so um, it's just especially the kids with the calligraphy they really they really love to to work on it and she's like all of them i you know, i don't want to just single her out but yeah um yeah so it's or the the cake decorator mm -hmm. uh you know it's uh now, the stuff that people do in their own homes, but, but, but you she don't takes think, it to a, a well, level. Yeah. you know it wasn't until um and, and that was katie the cake yeah. decorator uh she it wasn't really until she came into the stu the uh, lab that I realized, oh, that is an art. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at cakes and they're beautiful, yeah. but um, I never thought of it as an art until I, I saw her and yeah. and the amount of work and and talent that she has to show. Yeah, I know. You know, plus it's cake. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> it's, it's ephemeral, but yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, you know, and then you think about so much of the work they do is is up here yeah. you know they, they put in so much effort before they even put put pen to paper or, mm -hmm. or brush to, mm -hmm. to canvas and you get to talk to them about that process yeah. as yeah. well yeah and the other thing is one of the other things is they get to display their art in the library all month so we've got a, a, a gallery wall in there beautiful um, gallery wall yeah if your art lends itself to that sort of display that's available we have d display cases as well mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um they get exposure even when they're not in the library as yeah. well so yeah oh what a great program yeah, it's, a lot, oh, it's, a lot it's lot very fun. exciting yeah, the, the lab and and all the work that you're doing up there is really really very cool um we're going to talk a little bit more about that and and uh more and when, when you come back but i do want to remind everybody the application process is open right now uh for a resident artist mm -hmm. and uh scld.org and uh, the applications there and more information. Yep, we've started receiving applications already. So Fabulous. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting to hear. Yeah. Great. Well, Aaron, we'll come back and talk a little, more, little bit more here in just a moment, but we're going to take a quick break here on Library Out Loud. What? You haven't been to the library lately? Stop in today and see that the library is more than books. Spokane County Library District facilities feature on-site technology, including Wi-Fi, computers, and printers, as well as free use of meeting rooms. The Library District offers events and programs for all ages, from story times to career development and employer classes to social security workshops. Our staff is well-trained and happy to help. Find out more about your library at scld.org. I'm Jade Becker and I'm a senior at Chewila High School. I'm at STCU's Money Live event. In this scenario that we played today, I was a realtor. My spouse was a city worker. We had an 11 month old child and there was a lot of spending for that child, like diapers and formula and how to buy toys and clothing. <laughs> I'm very glad that I had this experience. It was super helpful. You need this to get far and ahead in life. I'm Jade Becker and STCU is here for good. Welcome back to Library Out Loud. I'm Jane Baker with the Spokane County Library District. Joining me today is Aaron Haight. Aaron's a technology programs specialist, uh, mostly based out of the North Spokane Library. Uh, and, and I think it's important to mention your title because uh, as we talk about quite a bit at the library, not everybody that works in the library is a librarian. Yeah. And, and other skills are, are there and, and you bring fabulous skills to the, the library for us. Um, so in the lab up at North Spokane, mm -hmm. we, well, we were talking about the resident artist um, program and applications are open now. We also want to mention there is a, a stipend right. with that. Um, and that stipend is provided by our Friends of the North Spokane Library. Yes, yes. They, they've so been very generous with the program. The a fabulous about, yeah. group. They they hold their book sales, they raise the money, and then yeah. they do things like this yeah. to help us out. So there is a stipend for that. Uh, again, the deadline is Friday, May eighth. So you have some time. Um, but application process is underway. Okay. Uh, check out our website, which is scld.org, and find out more about that. Um, let's talk a little bit more about some of the other things that go on in the lab. Okay. Um, we, we've had special programs. I know last summer we had um, a reading camp. Uh, right, Readorama. Readorama, that's yeah. it. Yeah, so that we kind of used the space for that last year, and yeah. um, I think that 
uh, bumped out the creators or the resident artists maybe for a while, but now it's back, so that's a good thing. Yeah, no, well, mm -hmm. the summer isn't quite here yet, but yeah, that's a, a, a lot of the program organization changes when, when school lets out for the kids, obviously, because sure. the rhythms are different. Sure. Um, yeah, and so summer often is, is more of a daily, let's have something in there for mm -hmm. kids to come and do mm -hmm. during their summer vacations. Mm -hmm. um, kid, there are a lot of great kids programs in the lab. Um, in fact, this Saturday, uh, we do probably the most popular uh, kids program. It's called Take It Apart. It's probably also the simplest and, and easy to run, easiest to run. Um, <laughs> this is a great program. We, yeah, yeah, we've been doing it for a couple, well, more than a couple years mm -hmm. now. Um, all it really is is we get uh, electronic equipment that no longer functions. Mm -hmm. We put it on tables. We hand them some tools and some gloves and goggles, and they take it apart, explore the insides, and see what's going on. And um, they just have a blast. There, there are only I tell them there are only a couple of rules: uh -huh. be safe, and be nice. Yes. Um, and the great thing, one of the great things about it is, it almost always involves parents or grandparents, or it's you know families come in there and they'll work on projects together. Oh, great! And um, a, a good mix of, of boys and girls, both. Mm -hmm. um, you get moms and sons, fathers and daughters, grandparents. Um, we get the equipment donated to us by Goodwill Industries, mm -hmm. so. Um, Periodically, I get to go down there and go through the stuff that's that's mostly broken and uh -huh. and uh, take it up there and give it one more chance to, to be useful. Sure, sure. Um, a great teaching uh, moment for kids. Yeah. Taking things apart without being responsible for having to put <laughs> it back together. Although some do. Oh. Some, some try. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> do I have to put this back together? No, but you can if you want. Right. Yeah. Well, th what What do you think is um, their favorite thing? What, what experience do you have with their favorite thing is being taken apart? You know what they what they want is stuff that that has lots of stuff in it. So it's VCRs, it's computers, mm. um, DVD players, that kind of thing. Uh, printers are are very interesting. There's, oh really? It's, I always think of printers as Rube Goldberg devices. They're just levers and, and gizmos and stuff, and it's just a great mystery. And mm -hmm. they love mm -hmm. if it's complex and it can take them a couple hours to take it apart that's what wow. they seem to like wow um, think how many careers you're you're <laughs> you're spurring yeah. on from taking those things apart yeah, that's fabulous yeah and that program happens every month yeah first saturday of the month at 10 a.m 10 a.m um, you don't have to be there on time it's mm -hmm. come as you are kind of wander in wander yep. out if you need to yep. Awesome. That yeah. is fabulous. Great program for that. Um, some other programs happening uh, at the lab. Let's talk about uh, those that are coming up. There's one, a uh, hands-on scientific method. That is also a monthly program. Yes. So the second Saturday of the month, we just started this one last last fall. Okay. Um, it's more of a themed. When I first thought of it, about it, I thought, well, we take stuff apart. Let's put stuff together. Okay. Um, and so most of the time, not all the time, we'll build a tool or build a device to help us explore some scientific topics. So um, we've built simple hydrometers to measure things like specific gravity and test how different fluids have, um, you know, different buoyancy. Wow. Um, we built, a, we made um, a quadrant, which is a device for taking sightings on the sun and, and figuring out where you are on the planet. Um, using our Glowforge, which we should probably talk about at yeah, some point. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about um, the Glowforge, too. Uh, so. We'll get, go to that. Um, okay. And um, so, yeah, it's just exploring of a specific scientific topic. Wow. Wow. I, I had no idea that we were getting that mm, sophisticated in some of those things, because I, I think you just started saying words that I didn't know. <laughs> so um, and what, what age is this? Where we do kids eight and up. Is it about that age? Yeah, that it's about that age. They take it apart. Sometimes we get younger kids, and as long as they're, they have an adult with them, mm -hmm. that's no problem. Mm -hmm. um, the scientific method stuff is a little bit so more complex, yeah. and so eight is probably the, the minimum age to really get it. Um, you're welcome to come in at a younger age as long as you do have a parent with you and, mm -hmm. and you're comfortable working together. But wow, yeah. what a great program. Very, yeah. very sophisticated stuff happening. So take it apart one weekend, come back the next weekend and put, put something together. back together. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about the Glowforge. You mentioned that. So, yeah, that is uh, a tool that we got last February. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've had it about a year. Mm -hmm. and it's a Glowforge 3D laser printer is what they call it. It's more of a, a cutter. So it's it's uh, eh, about two-thirds of the size of the table. Okay. And it works with wood and acrylic, fabrics, cloth. And um, you uh, load in 
graphic design, so cutting or engraving designs mm -hmm. um, into the interface, and then it, it produces that, that design in whatever medium you're working with. So I if I understand correctly, and, cor and correct me if I'm wrong, it kind of would like etch something right. out. It it um, removes material, right. unlike uh, a 3D printer. We have one at the Valley that, that uses material to create something. Right. This actually takes it out, so it would in engrave or etch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or uh, if that's the correct term. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. It, uh, we uh, when we were first testing it out, we had a, a local glass artist come in, and he was testing etching pieces of glass. And oh uh, wow! So it's um, also we've just started about a month ago. We started one-on-one um, -on -one appointments, so people can go onto our website, mm -hmm. um, click on events, and look for Glowforge. Uh, do a search on the word Glowforge mm -hmm. keyword, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll see Glowforge one-on-one -on -one appointments, and that's where we work with somebody in the community that wants to, to build something mm -hmm. using the Glowforge, and uh, so we've we've started doing that. Um, we've had people uh, create little customized coasters. Um, had a person last night that came in and built a just a box that he wanted to to. Uh, put a, a commemorative badge in there, uh -huh. um, and so we work with them to uh, put their design together in a way that the Glowforge understands, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. um, help them with the process of actually creating mm -hmm. it. So I'm sure there's a mm, some sort of special software program that you have to load that into, and, and yeah. you help with that. So the Glowforge has actually it's a web-based interface. Okay, um, we upload the the file. The file itself gets made in um, uh, design programs like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape, which is gotcha. the, the, okay. the public domain version of that program. Okay. Um, and so, but it can also do things like just scan a drawing and translate that into um, into a piece of work. Very nice. Yeah. Last fall, we had a holiday ornaments program where people would I provided basic ornament shapes, and they would draw things out. So maybe it's family members' names, or it's a tree in a little. Uh, uh, and then it scans that. We can superimpose that over the original shape, and it comes out in about five minutes. Over the original, so uh, you, so you were actually taking round ornaments. Yeah, well, round. And uh, yeah, and cutting them out of acrylic or, or wood. Okay, I so see. Wow, yeah, so well, that's very exciting. Yeah, it's fun. And that's all up at the the lab, right. and is it, it's set up all the time. So um, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's great! Yeah, that's fun. Very exciting. So, so that's the Glowforge printer yes. that's up there, and and as I mentioned, we have a, a three D printer at Spokane Valley, mm -hmm. not a Glowforge. It's different. It it, it kind of uses a plastic yeah. acrylicy type of material, yeah. and it will print whatever you send to it. So right. it's a little different. Yeah, although yeah. it is sort of you you still create a file. And you give it, and, and that's what it uses for its instructions. Same process, yeah. other end. Yeah. Well, that's fabulous. W uh, what else is happening at the lab? We have a few things. We have Pi Day coming up, um, which is three fourteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a fun one. Yeah, and that's we have a, a person coming in. Um, uh, Kate's coming in to show people how to make pie crust. Uh, literally making pie, pie on pie day. Yes, yeah, on pie day. Course, so yeah. what fun is yeah. that? So there's a there's a food related program and that's yeah. on Saturday, uh, March 14th, mm -hmm. um, and that's 1:30 to 2:30 up yeah. at the lab. Uh, registrations required that for is, that one, yeah. and that one's for adults. So you'd want to go to our website at scld.org and uh, register for that. Mm -hmm. um, also, the May the fourth be with you. So on May fourth, we're having um all things Star Wars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's just a good general fun for the, for the tweens and teens. A great program. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going on uh, May 4th, <laughs> 4 to 5, yeah. uh, in the lab uh, up at North Spokane. And then open house uh, at the lab. Right. If uh, somebody doesn't hear this program today but doesn't have a chance to get up there, on May 16th, there's an open house. Right. So it's basically the third anniversary of the lab. Mm -hmm. And to celebrate, we're going to... Sort of, we'll have displays showing what we've done over the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, some of them will be interactive. Um, some of them will just be hey, look at the cool things we've done. Cool things. Um, and you'll be there that day. I will be there that day. Uh -huh. We will have uh, the Glowforge up and running. Um, we will make little trinkets, uh, little commemorative uh, trinkets for that that people will be able to take with them. 
and see how they're made on the Glowforge. Oh, that's fabulous. So, yeah. That's sounds like, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. What a great job you have. It's, it has a lot of oh, fun. Oh, a lot of Thank fun. You. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the program today and talking about the lab up at uh, North Spokane, the resident artist program, again, uh, open until... Uh, May 8th for applications on that and if nothing else we'll see you at the open house all right well thanks for inviting me all right thanks for coming on and we'll see you next time on Library Out Loud thanks for watching ask the host a question recommend a guest or check out any of our other programs on Facebook YouTube Twitter Apple Podcasts Spotify or SpokaneTalksMedia.com Sponsored by the Spokane County Library District and STCU.